Hey guys, this is Tonner, and today we're talking about confirmation of a few different things from a dev interview. Now, this was the dev interview uh, from a couple weeks ago, uh, on my birthday actually, and I completely forgot to actually make a video about, about this for a bit, um, but there's a fair few different things here that I wanted to go through, confirmation on different things that we got and stuff, um, that a few things that were interesting to me at least, so hopefully they're interesting for you guys, uh, whether they're actually things you want to hear about, I'm not sure um we'll see um but yeah i'll just uh, reiterate again these were all from a dev interview so all the envoys sit down we have like three I think it was either three or four different devs this time uh, that we get to talk to. Usually they are from the combat team. So people who have made these characters and stuff like that. Um, Matt's there as well. And while he's on the combat team, he knows a bit more about like the, the ins and outs and why things are chosen and stuff as well, which is great. Um, Byron's there all the time and Todd and I think the other one was Matt this time um, Byron and Todd at work on the characters and stuff and do an amazing job there But um, anyway, I wanted to tell you guys these so the first one here is I asked basically Why is Kang on the Masters of Evil because you know Kang Masters of Evil I was I was a bit unsure about it and everything like that. Obviously, there's room for him to be able to be on there. Um, but basically, he kind of fit the team and everything like that. But the, what they said was, there are reasons that they can't talk about as to why Kang is on the Master of Evil. Um, and then later on during the interview, Matt, uh, I asked Matt because they're like, basically like, oh, we can't give you the full answer. You're going to have to ask Matt later on. Matt said, Kang's going to have a really long tail in the MCU. He's like, you know, starting now in the quantum mania coming up. And then he's going to go all the way into like Kang dynasty and stuff like that. This is like a, he's like the next big Thanos level character essentially. But what they said was that he's going to have a long tail in the MCU. So this won't be the only version of Kang that they will create. Now, there's a few different ways to be able to take that. There's obviously Kang. So it could be different versions of Kang, which, you know, they can do. They could do, you know, Nathaniel Richards, Kang. They could do uh, Iron Lad. They could do Kid Immortalis. They could do Scarlet Centurion, Ramatut, Immortus. They could do a fair few different characters there. Or it could just be similar how we've got like Spider-Man and Spider-Man symbiote. Maybe they take Kang, Kang the Conqueror and then put in brackets, you know, Anything. They could put anything in the brackets, realistically, because it, they could take Kang from so many different points of view, uh, not like, or different universes, and it actually being Kang rather than, you know, him being Kang and Nathaniel Richards, but going under a different name as well. Like, there's a few different ways that they could do this. Um, either way, uh, as I said, Kang's not going to be, uh, Kang's going to be in the MCU for quite a while, and this won't be the only version of Kang that they will create. So that's really interesting. Um, now they also said, and they said they couldn't confirm this, but they suspect it was that the next level of raids may be different tags required. So not bio mystic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's when they move on from doom raids until like, you know, I think we had the rumor of prime raids, but also like, maybe it's like, um, like, you know, who's the next big, like Kang raids, or maybe it's like, you know, Galactus raids or something like that. Apocalypse raids, either way, when they move on to that, um, they were suspecting that they may kind of switch it up there. Now that's obviously not confirmation there that that's going to happen. Um, it was kind of like, uh, it's a potential thing going to be happening, but that would be really interesting in my opinion. Next is also about Quicksilver. Quicksilver is going to be a mystic character. They were able to confirm that, which is really interesting. And I know that a lot of people are going to disagree with me about this. So I do think that Quicksilver can be a mystic character when you go off the MCU origins where he was created by experimentation from the... Um, from the Infinity Stone, where it's like the Infinity Stone kind of empowered him. The Infinity Stones are mystical um, because they like predate the universe and stuff. So that kind of makes sense. In the actual comics, there's an there's like a few different things here. Obviously, mutant is one thing that everyone kind of immediately jumps to. He's not a mutant. We'll put that one away. Grab your thoughts of him being a mutant and take them back. You know. 10 years. He hasn't been a mutant for quite a while. Um, quite a while. <laughs> um, he, he's definitely like, he's not a mutant. Um, he is technically within the, uh, within the comics. He's empowered by the, 
high evolutionary. They they kind of like did experiments upon them. He has experimented on them and then disguised them as regular mutants before returning them. They are not mutants. They are not the son and daughter of Magneto. Haven't been for ages. Like, have not been for quite a while. Look, this is what uncanny Avengers. 2015. Yes, I know you probably disagree with it, which is fine. A lot of people disagree with it. The right main reason they probably did it was so that way, you know, Marvel was able to use them in the MCU, but, you know, they're not. Mystic, however, obviously is from the MCU origins, which is fine. It's the same as when uh, Deadpool has the mutant origin. He's not technically a mutant either. Um, and these guys aren't technically mutants. They're technically like not mystic. They could be bio, bio mystic, mystic. But anyway, the confirmation is they're mystic. <laughs> I could spend a whole video talking about these two characters uh, being Quicksilver and uh, Scarlet Witch, but I'm not going to. Cutting it there. Quicksilver is mystic in Marvel Strike Force, is what we got told. Now, they also said that they mostly don't want to do negative speed or speed adjustments similar to Emma again. That's what they said. They mostly don't want to do it. Whether that means it's going to happen again or not, who knows? But either way, that's what they said. The Room 4 in Cosmic Crucible, you know how in the uh, Room 4, it's got the resurrection protocols where the mutants come back. It is intentional that they only revive with a small amount of health because they tested it with more and it didn't work. Next one, uh, Dark Promo Credits. You guys know Dark Promo Credits, um, currently used for like, you know, Dark Dimension characters, legendaries, and randomly zombie Iron Man. However, apparently when they in initially added them in, they were not originally going to be just for legendaries on Dark Dimension characters. They're meant to be for like, you know, big influential characters. So Zombie Iron Man, huge influential character upon the war meta. That's why he's got it. Um, eventually, assumedly, I would assume that Quicksilver probably gets Dark Dimension uh, credits as well. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if whoever their next kind of unique character is. Now, I will confirm that here, like uh, what they said, was that no character that, like they weren't aware of any characters that are coming up that are going to be using them, including not Kang and not um, any of the characters from the Masters of Evil, from what they were saying. Uh, now, the last one here is that they said they have plans for Skill and Mystic. That's in regards to the Skill and Mystic raids, um, where the skill team obviously is a bit lacking in regards to this Secret Avengers. They're kind of falling a little bit flat. The Mystic team nowadays is like, you know, completely different to New Warriors and stuff. Generally, like, I don't think anyone's really working on Cloak and Dagger for it anymore. So, assumedly, they have a whole new Mystic team or a whole new Secret Avengers team or adding on to the Secret Avengers or adding on to the new Warriors. Who knows? Either way, they have plans for those raids. Uh, but that's it, guys. Um, I would love to hear from you guys. What questions do you have to ask the devs in regards to like character creation, character development, that kind of thing that I can kind of make a list for next time we have one of these interviews? Because I find that these interviews... Um, I already hogged the time of them a bit, uh, and apologies to any other content creator that has an issue with that. But also, I sit there and wait for other people to ask questions, and they don't. So, therefore, I just want to ask a whole lot of questions. Like, I love talking to Matt. I could talk to Matt for days. I could talk to Byron and Todd for days about the characters. Um, you guys know how much I love kind of going into the in-depth on what characters do and why they do it and stuff like that, and even the lore and stuff. Like, we had a massive debate within... Um, within the, the, the call, uh, one on whether, um, Spider-Woman, as in Spider-Woman, uh, Jessica Drew should have the Spider-Verse tag. And then we were arguing that they should add the Spider-Verse tag to Morbius and to Agent Venom. And in fact, that actually came out as something the previous time where we argued that Mr. Negative and Kingpin should have the Spider-Verse tag. And I believe that they both do nowadays. Um, I definitely know that Mr. Negative does, but did Spider, Spider, Spider-Verse... Yeah, yeah, Kingpin did. We got Kingpin and we got uh, Mr. Negative, both the Spider-Verse tag, which was really great, obviously. Uh, but let me know down in the comments what you guys think. That's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.